Hello, today I thought I'd show you how to do a little bit of free motion machining. I thought we'd just have a go at some lines and circles. And on this piece here, I've already started doing some. I've done some lines, which I've done completely free motion. Well, free motion, but I've put a little bit of a guide marking on it, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And I've done some free motion circles in between. So when I'm marking something like this, now this could be used on borders, it could be used in sashing, it could be used in lots of things, or just quilting, as I'm doing it on this piece here. Um, when I'm marking some lines, because I'm working on a nice linen fabric here, um, and I'm going to be able to see more or less. Now you can use lots of different things. You can use uh, marking water erasable pens or a pencil. Um, you can get um, other pens that kind of disappear. Um, I'm not going to use any of those today because it's just simple. I just need some parallel lines that are near enough parallel. Because I'm working free motion, I don't mind if things are just a little bit wobbly. Um, so I'm using my ruler. And if you've got fingernails or something like that, it's a funny thing to say to you, but if you have, you can use your fingernail to help making the mark on the fabric or perhaps um, a pen that doesn't work anymore. Or in my case, I'm going to show you using the point of the scissors as well. So I want my parallel lines to be approximately a quarter of an inch apart. So on my ruler, there's a quarter of an inch line in from the edge. So I'm going to lay that over my last stitched line near enough. And as I said, with your fingernail, you could just run that up the edge of the ruler and that will leave a little groove in the fabric. But probably a, a more definite groove would come if you run something like a pointed but not too sharp something up there. And I'm not sure how well you can see that, but there is now a bit of a ridge along there. You can also do some finger pressing, things like that. And it's not a very clearly marked line, so you will need to be able to see that you can see that on the machine. Now I'm going to go to the machine and I'm just going to free motion that all the way through. You could do the straight lines with a walking foot, but I have I have a preference myself to do everything free motion once I'm set up to do that. So I thought I'd just show you how I do it. So I'm there and I'm going to use that line that I've popped in as a sort of a, a little bit of an indent in the fabric. And I'm just going to free motion that all the way along now. If you have it with your needle so that it stays down and if you've got that on your machine that would be really helpful because if you need to move your hands um, it, it will just wait where you've stopped. So there that wasn't so painful. Now I'm going to keep going and I'm just going to put some of these free motion circles down in between that larger space that I've left there. I'm just going to come across to here and I'm just going to start making a circle shape pretty much going out to each line so my circles won't be exact but they'll be roundish and as you can see not exact and just keep so I'm going all the way around and around a little bit more again, and then taking off into the next circle. you an idea that even though things are just a little bit wobbly in the end it all comes out looking fine so I've got I'm working on a linen fabric here 
and I've used a grey thread so it's just a little bit darker than the fabric so just so that it stands out a little bit and I just thought that was quite nice the way that looked and I'll just quickly show you now where I've used it on a small quilt. Um, on this quilt here which was a very simple construction and it's only small you could make it bigger of course and um, just with some strips I've just done some straight line quilting which I will have done free motion and then I've used these circles in between on my sashing and border. So I thought that was quite a nice way. Sometimes we're not sure how to quilt a sashing um, or a narrow border and things. For me, that would be an option that I could do. So I just thought I'd show you how to do some lines and circles. Thank you.